Hi guys, Steve Blankard here. Hey, a while back I did a video on how I made heel bullets on the lathe. Well, now I'm working on a 44 caliber Remington rolling block and I need to make brass for it. So I've got to make brass from a parent piece of brass, something completely different. So I thought I'd show you how I do that. So we'll, we'll go through the process uh, on the lathe here of one. Hopefully it'll go smoothly. Uh, there's a number of steps I do beforehand before I get here and a little bit more I do after. But what I start with, I'm doing a 44 rimfire that I got a center fire block in. Uh, and it's basically the equivalent of 44 Smith & Wesson American. So what I'm starting with is this brass here, which is actually made from 303 Savage. Uh, Buffalo Arms sells this as 44 Ballard Extra Long or Wesson after they've expanded it. So I bought this, but what I need to do, first off, I have to cut it down and shorten it quite a bit. So I do that, I get it shortened down to the length I need, which is 0.965. Uh, and then I expand it, I made an expander plug, and you can see the bulge at the top here where I've expanded it some. So now what I'm gonna to need to do in the lathe is cut that bulge off uh, because one, this brass is really thick. If you look at the rim, you can see, hopefully get it focused here. It's, um, it's really thick. It's about 25 thousandths thick right now, which is way too thick for the rim. I know it's having a hard time focusing here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this down to about 10 thousandths thick. So we're going to do that in the lathe. So to get it in the lathe, what I do, uh, well, actually, before I go there, let me show. So this is the heel bullet. Uh, hopefully you can see the heel that goes into it. Get it focus here. That heel is about uh, 12, uh, 412 thousandths. So what I'm doing is I have a mandrel. I've made a mandrel. Right now I've got a case already mounted up here in the lathe. But I've got a mandrel that's turned to 410 thousandths. Um, and then I press that into the case. Now I've already expanded the case to about 406 with the expander. Let me get this to focus there. So then I've taken this mandrel in the case and I put it up in an arbor press and I press the mandrel in so it's, a, so it's an interference fit and that holds it tight onto the mandrel so I can turn it in the lathe and I can turn off this additional thickness here. So right, what I need is I need to get it down to about the outside di diameter about between 4.436, 438, somewhere in that neighborhood. Right now it's about 0.465 here in this bulged area. So I'm going to turn a lot of this off and we'll turn some of the case down here, kind of even the case up as much as possible. And then I'm going to go over it with some uh, 400 grit sandpaper and oil and then a little polish to finish it up. So, uh, so we're going to try this now. So I'm going to set the camera up here and hopefully uh, you can see what's going to be going on here. All right. So hopefully you can see me. So I am going to set the lathe, the lathe set up. I always zero it first with the with the cutting bit touching the metal here. So my first pass, I always cut five thousandths just to get it all evened up. So I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to bring bring the bit in five thousandths of an inch, and then let it start feeding. And hopefully you can see this. So it's mostly cutting off here at the bulged area where I've expanded it. And then you can see then it starts missing as it gets further in because the case isn't that wide. Now after this case is fired for the first time, then this will it'll fire form. It'll all expand out and, and even up. All right, so I'm going to do a second pass. I'm going to take about four thousandths off here. And, uh, and then it will measure it and see where I stand. Okay, so I'm taking, cutting an additional, going in an additional 4,000, which is actually 8,000 total because you, uh, you measure the diameter. All right, so it's cutting along nicely here. So as we get down towards the end where the head is bulged a little bit, uh, so it's going to take that off. I'm going to take it right up to the, uh, just before the rim and stop here. All right, let me back the bit off and shut the lathe off. Now I'm going to measure it up, right up here in the head area where I had it expanded and see what my measurement is. So right now I am about 
439, which is good. I want between eh, 438, 436. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one thousandth more off on it, which is going to be two thousandths total. I've, so, so far I've taken nine thousandths off, so I'm going to do a total of ten thousandths. So I'll bring the lathe in here, bring the cross feed in for roughly one thousandth more. You can see there's a little bit of swarf coming off, how small that is. Uh, but taking light cuts gives it a much nicer finish. That's why I start with five thousandths, then I went to four, and now I'm just doing one. And that gives me the, final, the, the finish on the, on the metal uh, is a lot better at the end if you take a nice light cut. So, okay, I'm watching getting up to the recess on the rim here. And I stop the carriage feed and back it out. And let's take a measurement now. All right, so that is right at four, it looks like about 436, let's see. Yeah, about 436 there. So I'm happy with that. That's where I wanna be. So it looks pretty good. It's got a nice finish with the uh, the bit on it, but what I'm gonna do next, this is just kind of the, the process I've, I've used, is I take some 400 grit sandpaper and I'll put a little bit of spindle oil on it. And I'm just going to polish it a little bit just to take some of the machine marks out. You know, just, you know in a lathe, I'm using a collet here. Always watch out for anything for rotating parts. You don't want to get anything caught in it. Uh, so I'm just going to do a little shoe shine action here. Let it polish over it. Just do about, you know, 10 seconds or so on here. Just rub my finger on it. Just come out. Okay. This just takes some of the machine marks, even though the finish was really good with a cutting bit, this just smooths it up a little bit more. Okay. And I'll take a piece of paper towel. Now one safety tip, anytime you're working around rotating machinery, whether it's a lathe, drill press, or anything, never use a cloth rag, because a cloth can get snagged and it can rip, and if it's wrapped around your hand or finger, it can be very, very bad and bad news. I use paper towel. Paper towel will rip really easily if it gets caught on something and it's disposable. So just always use something like paper towel if you're wiping, polishing something. So what I'm doing here is just getting the grit and the oil off from the uh, 400 grit sandpaper. All right, so that's pretty good. So I think you see it looks pretty nice, but I'm going to take it one step further. I like to use Mother's Aluminum Polish, which sounds odd for steel and brass, but it actually works really good. So I take a little bit of Mother's on a piece of paper towel. Again, I'll put it in here and just polish it a little bit. And I'll just give it about, you know, 10 seconds or so. And that will just kind of bring it up to a nice, a final, really nice, clean, polished finish. All right. And then take a piece of clean paper towel and Clean all the polishing media off, and rotate it a couple times, get a couple of clean sections on it to polish it. And uh, there we go. And that's the uh, case pretty well finished. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out of the lathe now. Get this out of the way. All right, so hopefully you can see this. I'll see with my hand behind it here, um, but it's nicely polished. It's nice and even looking. Uh, let me take this down now. Okay, so it's nice and even looking, I think. Let me see if you can let me get this where you can see it. Get it where it focuses on it, hopefully. You can see how nice that case looks. So uh, all I have left to do, this little mandrel, like I said, I made this mandrel 410 thousandths to expand and lock into the case. But I also made it hollow, so now I just clamp the mandrel in the vise and take a rod and run it through the mandrel and tap the case off of the mandrel, and then it's ready to clean up and use. So the end result will be a finished round like this. Now this is a 44 Smith & Wesson American, uh, which is the, the center fire equivalent of my 44 rim fire round. So 
Anyway, that's a little uh, little uh, tutorial on how I make these cases uh, from, uh, again, this is 303 Savage Brass I started with. Now, I have read, and I'm going to try it, um, that I can make cases for from 41 Magnum Brass also. And I think the diameter of the actual case is, is right on, so it may not need much any machine work. The only downside of the 41 Magnum is the, case, the rim is smaller. This is uh, about a 505 thousandths rim. The 41 Magnum's four, I don't know, 480 something, I think. So I'm just not sure if it'll, if the extractor will catch it or not. So uh, I've got some of that coming and I'm certainly gonna try it. But, uh, but this is how I make uh, these cases from 303 Savage. So when I get done today, I'll have 20 cases finished and ready to use. So, well, I hope you found this interesting. Uh, it's kind of a, a fun little project for me. I enjoyed making these old rifle shoot again and, uh, making the cases and, and bringing them back to life. So I, I hope you found this uh, interesting, a little bit enjoyable, and see how I do this. So, all right, take care, fellas.